veteran owned subcontractor utilization bid incentive. Second, the veteran owned small business enterprise joint venture and veteran owned business enterprise bid incentive. And third, the business enterprises owned or operated by people with disabilities uh, utilization incentive. And after that, briefly go over the city certification programs as they relate to BEPD and BBE firms. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the uh, people in attendance today may already be aware of this, but I did want to give a brief overview of bid incentives generally. Uh, when the Department of Procurement Services advertises a specification, the specification will list the applicable incentives. The incentives do vary based on type of contract. So we definitely encourage bidders to pay careful attention to what is included. The bidders will be required to submit affidavits and in some cases uh, specify documentation in order to be considered for the incentive. And uh, if eligible, uh, the bid amount is reduced by the amount of the incentive for evaluation purposes only. It will not affect the ultimate contract value. Uh, next slide, please. So of the three incentives I mentioned, the first one I want to go over briefly is the veteran owned subcontractor bid incentive. The idea and the goal is to encourage the use of veteran owned subcontractors on construction projects. So the key points to keep in mind here, the bidder must use city certified veteran owned small local businesses as subcontractors. And it is specified city certified uh, veteran owned businesses. Uh, the amount of the incentive is tiered based on uh, the amount of the commitment uh, measured in terms of percentage of total contract value. I've listed here the precise numbers uh, for your uh, review, but uh, if the commitment is 1 to 16% of the total contract value, the incentive is 0.5% of the base bid. If the commitment is 17 to 32%, the incentive is 1%. If the commitment is 33 to 49% of the contract value, the incentive amount is 1.5% of the base bid. And if the commitment is 50% or greater of the contract value, the incentive is 2% of the base bid. Uh, and uh, if you would like to read more about that in the city's municipal code, the citation is below. Next slide, please. So this second incentive is also related to veteran owned businesses. Uh, it is a little more involved. Uh, this is designed to increase contracting opportunities and participation by small, small local veteran owned business enterprises and eligible joint ventures that are made up of small local businesses and also veteran owned business enterprises. So to sort of, uh, go over the broad strokes of this. Uh, the two ways you, that a bidder can qualify for this is just to by itself be a veteran owned small local business certified by the city or to participate in a joint venture where uh, some of the members are small local businesses and some of the members are veteran owned businesses. Uh, if Applying as a joint venture, I do want to uh, note that the joint venture member that is the veteran owned business can rely on multiple types of veteran related certification, uh, state, federal, city and county. Uh, and if uh, anyone would like more details about uh, those, I can uh, provide more information uh, afterwards. Uh, but if the bidder wants to qualify without being in a joint venture, it has to be a city certified small local veteran owned business. Um, unlike the last incentive I mentioned, this one is for construction and non construction contracts. Also, unlike the last one I mentioned, it's not a tiered incentive. If the bidder qualifies, they get a 5% incentive. Otherwise, they do not get an incentive. And finally, I do want to note that this incentive cannot be stacked or combined with the veteran owned subcontractor bid incentive. So uh, if there is a construction 
contract that has both of these incentives listed, they can't be combined uh, and stacked. Next slide, please. The third incentive I wanna mention is not veteran owned business related. It is the business enterprises owned or operated by people with disabilities incentive. The key points to remember for this one are that this is designed to increase contracting opportunities for the BEPD firms. This can be uh, applied for both by the prime contractor being a BEPD firm and also by proposing the use of subcontractors that are BEPD firms. Uh, with the bid, BEPD certification letters must be provided. The incentive uh, applies to both construction and non-construction contracts. And much like with the veteran-owned subcontractor incentive, this one is tiered. Uh, the more participation that is proposed by BEPD firms, the larger the incentive measured as a percentage of the base bid. Um, I have listed the uh, numbers below uh, for anyone that would like to review, and certainly I could provide more information about that afterwards um, if anyone would like. Next slide, please. And uh, this, again, may be known to the people uh, participating here today, but uh, generally speaking about all bid incentives, after award of a contract, uh, the bidder may be uh, required to submit documentation either over the course of the life of the contract or at co contract closeout, demonstrating that the uh, contractor was complying with the bid incentive requirements throughout the life of the contract. Uh, and if it turns out at the end of the contract period that the bidder was not complying with uh, what they stated in their affidavit, the uh, there may be a fine of up to three times the amount of the incentive granted or a finding of non-responsibility for future contracting opportunities. Next slide, please. So up to this point, I have been talking about bid incentives. Uh, going forward, I wanna talk about the city certification programs as they relate to this topic. Uh, I have listed these six types of certification that the city uh, uh, certifies in. In bold, I've placed, I have uh, noted the two that are relevant for this presentation. The city does uh, certify BEPD and VBE firms. Uh, below that, I've listed uh, sort of very broad but common eligibility requirements for a certification program. Uh, the businesses must be at least 51% owned or contro and controlled by, in the case of VBE certification veterans, in the case of BEPD certification, individual with disabilities. The businesses must be small and they must be independent and viable, which basically means they're already going concerns and aren't dependent on non-qualifying firms to operate. Uh, next slide, please. So to try to cut through all of the uh, really nitty gritty information about certification, I put some quick bullet points about what the relevance of being certified in these areas is as it relates to city contracts. So for BEPD certification, uh, when the city certifies you, you can use that certification to apply for the bid incentive I discussed. But I did want to stress, um, unlike with some of our certification programs, there aren't contract compliance goals for BEPD firms at this point. Uh, so the certification, at least as it's relevant for these purposes, is used for applying for the bid incentive. In contrast, for the VBE certification, uh, not only can that certification be used for applying to the uh, veteran-related bid incentives I mentioned, but uh, in fairly recent news, the city uh, by ordinance has a VBE pilot program where up to uh, the city can set up to 1% contract specific participation goals for VBE firms in circumstances where there are at least three city certified VBEs in the areas of specialty that are involved in the specification. Uh, fairly recently, that program was uh, extended and reestablished through April 30th, 2021. 
So just to quickly summarize, although the BEPD certification uh, is used for bid incentive purposes and not for uh, compliance goals, uh, the VBE certification can be used for the bid incentives and where applicable also for meeting compliance goals. On next slide, please. So that is the end of my presentation. I am, of course, very happy to answer any questions uh, at the end of this presentation because I'm aware that was uh, a lot of information in a short period of time, but I'm happy to clarify or explain anything that uh, may be of interest to the attendees. And with that, uh, I will hand that over to John uh, for his per uh, portion of the presentation. Thank you. John, you have a PowerPoint presentation too, correct? I do, I do. And uh, you should have control right about now. Okay, okay. Yep, I am seeing screen sharing, so let me activate that. And here we go. I think that we go ahead and launch this. Okay, okay, so thank you all. And go ahead and jump in with now, a little John, bit. John, just real quickly, we are seeing mm -hmm. um, two screens. Uh, uh, okay, let me. Yeah. Uh, we can get it down to just one. Let me see. I think it's in the, well, you might know your system a little bit better than me, but it's in the display settings. You have two monitors probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I wonder. Can we just use the one? Mm -hmm. I am trying to figure out how to get to just the one. You're So you're seeing two screens? Yeah. We see the note screen and then the regular screen. Oh, you know, let me. Let me try changing that. Okay, is that uh, is that better? That's better. Thank you. Great. Okay, thank you for pointing that out. So, uh, so I'd like to thank everyone for uh, for inviting Elite Service Disabled Veteran Owned Business Network to participate in today's event, and. Little background on myself and Elite. So I serve as the National Secretary and Illinois Chapter President for Elite. Um, our chapter has been around since about 2010. Uh, in 2011, we hosted our national convention in Chicago and happy to say that we're bringing the event back to Chicago next year. And I'll get into a little more information on that in a bit. Um, in terms of Elite's purpose, you know, this really boils down to a few key areas. Um, I'll talk about these in more detail, but boils down to advocacy, so working with policymakers and, and the community as a whole to increase opportunities for veteran-owned businesses and their partners, education through events that we do, um, bringing in subject matter experts uh, to talk with our, our members. Uh, the only chapter hosts meetings throughout the year we actually have a, an event coming up in early December that I'll be sharing information about that includes some subject matter experts who are going to be talking about leveraging uh, diversity certifications and also ownership considerations with regard to diverse businesses and in particular veteran owned businesses. And the third thing is just creating opportunities for our members. Uh, hosting networking events, doing matchmaking, uh, it's often the case that a large company will reach out to me asking if I can help connect them with a, a veteran owned business. I'm always happy to connect them with, with members that provide work in that area. So a little bit about the online chapter, as I mentioned, uh, we've been uh, around since about 2010. We've grown to become the largest chapter in the country. Um, Elite was founded in San Diego over 20 years ago. Uh, they have several chapters out there and at other places across the country. Um, but again, the uh, the things that we've done center around advocacy and, and networking and, and education. We've been very happy to work with the state of Illinois and city of Chicago on some uh, programs for the veteran owned business community. Uh, 
those of you who are familiar with the veteran business program might know that uh, one part of getting certified with the state's veteran business program is the ability to provide a VA certification for a streamlined process. That's something that we are directly involved in, in addition to initiating that um, long time ago. <laughs> and we continue to work with the state on improvements to that program. And uh, we've also been happy to be involved in, in providing input to the, uh, the programs that were just discussed, such as the veteran bid incentive programs, uh, business enterprise owned by people with disabilities program. Uh, we facilitated some things that enabled disabled veteran owned businesses to participate in the BEPD uh, program. And as I mentioned, our, our next really big thing is the, the national convention coming back to Chicago next year. Uh, with COVID, we, we made the decision to postpone from original plans to have it this August. Um, Next year, we're going to be hosting it at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. And please let me know if anybody would like more information on that, or you can go to sdvobconference.com. So just drilling into some of the details that I, I talked about. So again, advocacy, one of the, the big things that we do, uh, we do this nationally. I talked about some examples of things that we've done with the city and in and, and the state of Illinois should mention that we are all uh, volunteers. The whole, uh, the whole network is comprised of uh, business owners. And we, those of us who are involved in, in uh, administrative kinds of roles with, with elite, um, we're doing this on a voluntary basis. So it's because we're very passionate about, about helping the, the veteran community. Key goal, of course, for everybody, because we are business owners is, is helping businesses to grow either through uh, direct referrals for, for opportunities, matchmaking, um, pairing up companies that can team with other diverse companies, or things like the bid incentive programs that were discussed, or just to go after contracts that have veteran on business participation goals. And big part of this is, is key partners, uh, connecting our members with, with government agencies, uh, connecting them with subcontracting opportunities, and then also highlighting member businesses through things like the directory on Elite's website. I talked a bit about monthly meetings with, with special guest speakers. For the foreseeable future, we'll be doing these virtually. Um, hope to get back to the normal routine of hosting our meetings in, in downtown Chicago. These are, are hosted at a uh, location right on LaSalle Street, so generally easy for people to get to. And I want to talk a little bit about the national convention. So, as I said, this has been bumped back to next August. It's going to be August 11th through the 13th. A key feature of the convention are breakout sessions. So, we've got a few different tracks with different focus areas. And you know, we've got one track focused on government work, another track focused on um, commercial work, and general business development, things like uh, coaching our members on doing a capabilities presentation. Uh, matchmaking is always popular. This is where we, we pair up businesses for one-on-one -on -one sessions with potential buyers and, and partners. And how to join Elite is, is pretty easy. You can go to our website at elitesdvob.org. For disabled veteran-owned businesses, membership is only $60 a year. Um, I've been pleased to see uh, members actually volunteering to donate more money because they see all the value that they get out of being part of our organization. Uh, this includes a directory listing, so businesses can uh, be found through search features on our, in our directory. The directory listing includes every detail about the business, contact information, social media links, business profile, areas that it provides services in, and so forth. And the other thing is getting on our mailing list because we do push out information that we feel is of interest to our members. Uh, today's event is a good, good example of that, where we've pushed that information out. We've got about uh, 500 companies that have opted in to get this kind of information. So another thing that's just an automatic part of membership and others can feel, uh, feel free to opt in as well. So with that, I have covered everything that 
I needed to go over with Elite. Uh, are there any questions that I can help answer? Well, we're going to take the questions at the end, <clears throat> so we're going to pass it on over to Lori Dittman and uh, from the mayor's office for um, people with disabilities, and then we'll take the questions, John, if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh huh. All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kathy and Jackie. For one, one, one moment, Lori. Uh, I don't think they see your presentation. You do have a presentation, right? No, I don't have. A, oh. Any. oh, OK. No. All righty. I don't know if you have something else to put up. Yeah, I do. I will go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stop. Yeah. you. Sure. Now it's like, oh, she doesn't have one. Um, but I wanted to th thank everyone for um, participating in in this uh, workshop. Um, I think uh, both Mitchell and um, John gave some really good information leading up to the BEPD programs. But I wanted to also give uh, you more information about MOPD and and what we do and and how the BEPD program um, fits into this. Um, MOPD was established the same year that the ADA was passed, and, and so we have a long history in, in Chicago. Um, we, uh, our mission is to promote total access, full participation, and equal opportunity for people with all types of disabilities. Our comprehensive approach to systemic change for people with disabilities include the delivery of direct independent living services, public education awareness about uh, disability issues, uh, accessibility compliance, public policy, and uh, other initiatives with the goal of making Chicago the most accessible and inclusive city in the nation. Additionally, we also provide a lot of disability related expertise to city departments and city agencies as well as the private sector companies and nonprofit organizations. Um, what we do overall is uh, our work is to meet the diverse needs of more than 600,000 individuals with disabilities who live, uh, work, and visit Chicago. Um, just to give you kind of a, a brief overview of, of the type of programming we do have, uh, we have information and referral, providing uh, many resources to, to people with disabilities. Again, accessibility compliance. We have a number of youth programs, disability resources, training where we will mostly go out. To, we do some internal, but a lot of uh, outside training for um, uh, private organizations and, and businesses on um, uh, more disability awareness and, and etiquette. Uh, we have a number of employment programs with independent living programs. We have a very popular OMOD program, which gives uh, $10,000 grants to people to um, make their homes um, more accessible. And, and that's for homeowners and renters. In the public policy unit, which is which is uh, what I do for for MOPD, um, I wanted to just also give a little more information about the um, BEPD program, you know, and and why why we took the route our route the route to uh, work closely with the uh, Department of Program, excuse me, Procurement Services to develop this program. We initially saw this um, uh, employment is there rather unemployment is a big issue in the disability community. So we're always looking at ways which we can uh, increase those uh, employment opportunities for people with disabilities. And what I think we all know, and certainly everyone um, uh, participating today is that small businesses are some of the is one of the best ways to in, increase employment. Um, small businesses, you know, employ the majority of people in, in this country. And we so we thought that by uh, anything we can do to enhance and increase the number 
of um, businesses owned by people with disabilities that that would in turn also help with the with the employment issues. Um, so that's what kind of uh, started our our path um, to developing this program. Um, just to give you a little more detail about the program itself, it targets or or, or those that who are eligible for it are for profit uh, corporations, partnerships, associations, and, and businesses. Um, individuals with disabilities who are want a contract with the city. Um, but one of the ways in this is different from other programs is um, nonprofit corporations um, uh, can also be certified as BEPDs. Uh, there's some conditions by which they need to um, comply. They uh, are required to pay an over, uh, excuse me, an hourly wage. That is not less than federal minimum wage, and it's not on a piecework basis. Um, and it requires the management and daily business operations uh, to be controlled by one or more uh, people with disabilities. And the, their corporate purpose um, must include either directly or indirectly services to individuals with disabilities. So that's something that uh, we struck out as as a different approach to really help um, those nonprofit organizations that are out there that also employ people with disabilities. We also uh, a couple of years ago added um, service disabled veterans to to our program as as well um, to the BEPD program. So that is a, another group um, that uh, is able to to benefit uh, from the BEPD program. Mitchell beautifully explained the uh, the bid incentives. Um, so I would I won't go into that, but I just wanted to be able to give uh, a little more context um, to to. Um, why the city added a BEPD program um, along with the other certification programs that it offers. And at the end of uh, um, this, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have um, about it. And again, I thank everyone who's participating today and want to turn it over to Kathy. Thank you so much, uh, Lori. Thank you for your presentation and your time. Um, Jackie, I think Rodney's got a couple of slides that he's going to share on my behalf. If you can pass the ball to him, that would be great. He already um, has. He already has it. Okay, perfect. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're so grateful to our uh, presenters today to be able to talk about the resources they provide and just how innovative they're being in communicating about um, opportunities uh, to all of our local business community. We wanted to just really touch on, um, you know, I know that we want, gotta get to, want to get to some questions, so I just really at a high level wanted to touch on how do you stay in touch with us and find out about opportunities. Um, so, I, you know, you've probably, if you've done any of our other sessions, you've heard about our buying plan. Um, that's a forecast that looks out about six quarters for what the city is buying, as well as uh, 14 additional um, contracting agencies um, in the region. Um, so this just kind of lets you know ahead of time, you know, what are the, con what are the opportunities that are coming out and how can your business prepare uh, for that, or to be on the lookout for that. Um, and Rodney, I think we've got a couple of other slides that talk about how to stay in touch, like the DPS alert, et cetera. Um, Thanks. So I, I don't know if I'm going to go into this level of detail of like everything that's in the buying plan, but you definitely can see a number of different types of contracting categories. I think the next slide might talk about the fact that you can see what kinds of uh, subcontracting opportunities are available. As we had mentioned, yes, there is a 13 additional agencies uh, on top of the city of Chicago in the buying plan. The kinds of information you can find, who's buying it, what department, what kind of contract it is. Um, and that subcontracting category, especially the funding source, is particularly important if you're thinking about getting certified, um, particularly in the VBE um, uh, certification, um, but certainly, you know, in any of the certification types. Um, but if, if, if the project is locally funded, if you see that in the buying plan, that means that these, uh, these 
certifications, the BEPD and the VEB um, can apply. Um, and so, I mean, this takes us, I think the next step is the, uh, uh, yep, there's a how-to guide also in the buying plan. Um, Rod, if you can advance to the, uh, uh, if you can advance to the DPS alert slide. Perfect. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so what we see in the buying plan, uh, then once a week, we send out an email newsletter where you can find out about different events that are happening, either, you know, even with elite or um, at the mayor's office of people with disabilities. If there's information uh, for your business, we send this out in this DPS alert. Uh, we also send out a weekly listing of what is actually advertised and what's on the street. Um, we think this is really important because most projects do list a pre-bid conference. Uh, so at the pre-bid conference, you can learn a lot about, you know, what incentives are available. Also, I think I saw a question in the Q&A about, you know, how do you connect with a prime? Um, so for our pre-bid conferences, a takeout list or a, a, a list is available of those folks who attend the pre-bid conferences. Um, so you're able to download that or find out that information, and that's another uh, tool for you to use in your business development. Um, finding out which primes are interested in a particular project can help you um, as you try to market your business and be a sub to that prime. Um, like I said, it also at those pre-bid conferences, you learn about uh, you know, what incentives are applicable to this particular project. Um, next slide, please. Great. Um, so then kind of the third piece for us in terms of communication is following us on our social platforms, Facebook, Twitter, um, all of these uh, sessions that you're at the vendor fair and beyond are available on our YouTube channel. And we've just recently added LinkedIn, uh, which we hope is another way to bridge the gap of folks, you know, trying to find each other and network um, along with, you know, participating in events such as like the great ones Elite puts on, et cetera. Um, so that's just a little very high level of how to stay in touch with us um, and how you can find out more about upcoming projects and if they you know, include the incentives, et cetera. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Jackie and, and try to handle any Q&A that you might have. All right. Um, <clears throat> we have a host of questions here, um, so let's get to them. Um, Let's see. Uh, all right. What is the best way for, um, I think it's DCE, to reach out uh, as a certified VBE firm um, to the lead prime uh, firms pursuing work with VBE goals? Kathy, are you speaking? Sure. I, yeah, <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> um, so certainly one of the suggestions I had is, you know, making sure that you follow, follow us, follow those pre-bid conferences to see what is being advertised um, to kind of just, you know, plug in and get in the, get in the process. Um, you know, another way is to see which uh, prime contractors are working now on our projects. Um, and there's a lot of information that is available on the city of Chicago website, including awarded contracts and then the information for prime contractors, contact information. Um, we do teach another class, actually, Rodney LeBeau, who's our chat moderator today, is uh, facilitates that class um, that takes you through our website and shows you different like uh, tips and tricks and not even tips and tricks, but like there's literally thousands of pages of information on our website. Um, and that class will help you navigate it to find out how you can learn which primes are working now and how can you can reach out to them and how you can help that can help with your business development goals. And um, uh, along with that, uh, Charles N. Anderson is a principal cons uh, a consultant for Landmark Management, and he specifically wants to know how do veteran-owned businesses uh, hook up with uh, uh, subcontractors and um, uh, partner with uh, contracting opportunities. Is there a special something that they could do? Um, so, I mean, I, I would I would mirror that advice. And also, I mean, I'd, I'd also toss it out to my fellow panelists. You know, John, I don't know if you wanted to kind of jump in here too as well. Um, like what, what have your, has your experience been through Elite, like um, helping folks connect? And that's another. 
Sure, sure. So I would say that, you know, as you mentioned, attending pre-bid conferences is a great way to connect directly with, with uh, potential partners or primes. Uh, beyond that, I know that it's it's been very effective for our members to participate in different types of events, just doing, you know, there's many diversity events and uh, some of these also include primes that, that come out. Um, and think about everything that's happening with uh, with the O'Hare project, ORD21. There's a bunch of events with uh, with primes that are actually hosting those kinds of things. Um, events like this one, um, I'd say more generally, it, it's good to uh, to just start establishing relationships. And I think referrals are another way for my own business. That's how we we find ourselves on on other teams. I'd also like to add, um, like in addition to the great events Elite has, the city maintains a list of assist agencies and maybe like Rodney, you can put it in the chat or the Q&A for the group, um, a list of assist agencies, including Elite. So um, these are nonprofits or you know uh, cha local chambers of commerce that really work with diverse businesses um, and they are continually putting out events. And when we do that weekly newsletter, we will publicize what events are out there in the community um, we will also maintain a Google calendar on our website of like, these are where all the events are so that you can just see at a glance what everybody's doing. Um, so, I mean, these folks that are on this list and the, the website address is chicago.gov backslash assist agency. Um, so this list uh, of folks like, you know, we definitely would recommend get on all their mailing lists, follow them on social media, um, you know, see what kind of event they're doing, events that they're doing in, in terms of networking with primes and subs. And like often um, many of them will actually feature a prime contractor that'll be doing a presentation and you can go and engage with others um, to talk about partnering, et cetera. So, um, so it's about 40 different uh, organizations that we work with now. So we would definitely encourage you to you know, plug in with those groups, um, see what they have going on. And that's another way to meet um, potential uh, partners. And uh, Kathy, you might want to talk just briefly about the bid opportunity list because someone mentioned about Cook County's procurement um, bid list and and is asking if um, there is a, a, a comprehensive link uh, for opportunities in all of Illinois. Uh, there isn't a there is not a, a comprehensive mm -hmm. list for all of Illinois. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the city of Chicago, we serve thirty city user departments and if you were listening to er the presentation earlier this morning like it is definitely important to understand like what an agency buys and also what they don't buy um so there's a couple of things here one for the city of chicago the bid opportunity list comes out every week with our dps alert it's also always updated on another i'll give you another link um chicago.gov backslash bids that's where the city of chicago information is located if you want to work with another government agency, like any of those like 13 that I mentioned that are in the buying plan, um, when you go to look at the buying plan, which is available on, on the front page of our, our website, and Rodney's going to put all these links in there for you, um, there is a page that says agencies in this book. And we've hyperlinked directly to not their general page, but to the procurement page for that agency. So if you're interested in checking out what the park district has coming up or schools or what have you, whatever agencies in that buying plan, there's a hyperlink to the procurement page of their um, agency. So, so that's another way to kind of find directly like where it is. The buying plan itself is kind of the most comprehensive thing we have like in the region, but because all these agencies have separate purchasing authority by law, they do do their purchasing, you know, separately, but like it's it's all kind of packaged in that buying plan. And this person says, "I'm a certif I'm certified as a service uh, a service disability veteran owned bi small business with the Department of Veterans Affairs. The, the, does the city of Chicago offer reciprocity with uh, Veteran Affairs?" I'm sure. So I believe that you can use some of that certification documentation in in some of your certification application. But when you are VBE certified by the city of Chicago and want to take advantage of some of these programs, um, you also have to you have to meet the criteria of being a veteran, but also of the local certification standards of the city. So we certify in a six county region. 
Um, there's also the particular size standards that the city is bound by. So there's a number of other elements. So there is not a direct reciprocity, um, but some of that documentation, you know, could be transferable. And when you do your certification, and certainly happy to follow up with you online, offline, excuse me, and like put you in touch with a certification officer who can kind of who can go through your particular situation and help you understand what additional information is needed. And Kathy, if I can piggyback sure. on that, if, mm -hmm. unless things have changed, I also understand that the VA's uh, disabled veteran owned business certification can be used for access to the BEPD program to demonstrate disability. Is that that's still the case? Thank you. Yes, John. That, yes this is Lori. And that, yes, and that that is one of the ways in which um, be certified as a BEPD uh, disabled. Um, uh, you know, service, uh, service disabled veteran, um, sorry. Um, and um, so we, we use that or we use um, if someone is certified as with the state program um, um, with a disability rate of, I think, 10, 10%, I would have to double check that. So there's a couple ways in which that certification can happen. Do you want to Oh, I'm sorry, John, were you saying something? No, I'm sorry, this was Mitchell. So oh, Mitchell, I'm sorry. Yeah, so the, the BEPD uh, definition includes uh, state certified firms and also uh, firms certified by the city. But I did want to add for the uh, federal VA uh, certification, although there's not direct reciprocity, as Kathy mentioned, uh, when I was discussing that 5% eligible joint venture incentive, uh, if bidder is going forward as a joint venture, uh, the veteran owned portion of that joint venture can rely on the uh, federal uh, certification letter. Uh, that's assuming, though, that they're JVing with a qualified local business. Uh, but I did want to flag that. Thanks. Okay. And there's a question that says we are certified through the state of Illinois Central Management Services as a PE, PBE, I'm sorry, uh, persons with disability owned business enterprise. Will the city uh, reciprocate the state's PBE certification? Um, so generally speaking, and Mitchell, jump in and correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, so just general, generally speaking, regarding reciprocity, the city has um, reciprocity with Cook County. So in a, in a, and it does not directly with the state of Illinois. So um, there are a number of other checks that have to happen. So I mean, I, I think there's the documentation that was provided for you to receive your certification at the state of Illinois would be used in support of. Um, a certification at the city of Chicago, uh, but there are would be additional standards again, such as where you're located geographically and some size standards that aren't exactly equal. So, um, you know, and Lori, maybe too, if I jump in, if there's, um, I don't know how, you know, MOPD does a review to, to assure that the business is owned by a, by a person with a disability. Um, so I don't know where, if the state certification is part of, you know, that qualifies for that review or kind of where that fits into the process. Um, but it isn't necessarily a straight reciprocity and that like the other things that are requirements for the city of Chicago certification also have to be verified, such as ge geography, size standards, et cetera. You're on. <laughs> um, just to add to that, I mean, M MOPD's role in the uh, in the BEP program is to review the Schedule G's, and that's another part that's that's different than the other certification programs. Is the Schedule G's are an affidavit um, of disability, and those get signed and and filled out by a physician. Um, some of that can vary by um, documentation from um, you know the VA or. Uh, you know, or the state certification. So it can vary a little bit with regard to the service disabled veteran portion of that, but everything else re does require a Schedule G 
which is an affidavit uh, for disability. Um, and we do use the ADA's definition of, of uh, disability. So it's um, a disability that would affect um, a major life activity. And those are the things that, that we would look at for eligibility in the program. Thank you so much for that. And um, for those of you that are wondering if there's going to be a recording or if the decks can be shared, the answer to your question is yes. You can find that at www uh chicago.gov backslash vendor fair and look under the update the red update sign and click on this link and you will see all of the uh, uh, uh powerpoints there and the recordings there the last question we have is will the city of chicago eventually have veteran participation requirements similar to WBE and MBE to align with other organizations such as the Tollway and the Capital Development Board? Um, so I'm, I'll start, but maybe Mitchell, you can help uh, help me with this response. Um, you know, uh, Mitchell presented uh, some slides on the VBE uh, pilot program that's happening um, right now at the city of Chicago. Um, and that is, uh, that's our first step um, in, in it all uh, is based on the availability of the firms that are veteran owned firms that are certified um, in order to be able to um, determine, you know, what the next step for participation um, could be at the city of Chicago. Uh, Mitchell, I don't know if you wanted to add, add on to that. Yes, yeah, so the addition of, of veteran participation requirements is relatively recent. And so, um, and it also, uh, according to the pilot program uh, established by ordinance, uh, says that the city can only establish a contract specific goal if there are three or more certified firms in the areas of specialty involved in the, the uh, project. So the upshot of that is uh, there haven't been BBE goals really in the past, but going forward um, as more firms are certified, and as more projects are advertised, I think that uh, you can expect to see more projects with uh, contract specific participation goals for VB firms. Uh, okay. Yeah, and it, it's definitely this um, data based, data driven decision making. So that's why we, um, you know, encourage as many firms to, you know, pursue certification um, as possible. And we try to do as much outreach on those topics um, and working with groups like Elite. Um, and others in order to share information about what are the benefits and the more the more veteran owned firms um, we have certified, the more that we are able to to do to to incorporate them um, into the, the contracting opportunities in the city of Chicago. So definitely, please, you know, uh, share information about this. Uh, keep stay in touch with us. Ask us questions. Share with your other colleagues or other businesses that, you know, that could benefit with this certification and, and we're happy to. Uh, continue to provide information, education, and, you know, and assistance along the way. So this is at the end of our uh, uh, session for today. And um, I just wanted our guest speakers to just go around. And if you have any uh, final words you wanted to add, something you may have not said that you wanted to say. Um, so I'll start with uh, Lori Dittman. <laughs> Uh, you're on mute, Lori. <laughs> Thank you for this uh, opportunity. Um, you know, one thing I did want to mention with regard to um, uh, the BEPD program is often, you know, I think you're seeing a lot of private companies and and um, industries uh, doing, you know, more to achieve. Uh, you know, diversity goals in, in terms of who they're um, procuring with. And one thing that, that we've heard about is private, uh, private companies not knowing, you know, just what to do in terms of, of knowing who's eligible as a disabled owned business. And so our BEPD program, even though it's, you know, it doesn't just have to be used for contracting with the city, it can also be used as evidence of um, a business being owned and operated by uh, a person with a disability. So that is something I wanted to point out. So thank you. 
Thank you. And we'll go with John. Yes, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity for me to represent Elite Service Disabled Veteran Owned Business Network at this event. Um, just one point that I'd like to reinforce that, that came up it deals with the importance of certification. And I'd like to cast that in a slightly different light. You know, getting certified is not only something that benefits the in individual business that is getting certified, but it benefits the community as a whole. Um, we've got this, you know, rising tides lift all boats kind of thing that, that I've seen come out of conversations with a wide range of agencies that talk about the importance of increasing that competitive pool of certified firms that does enable them to do things like setting, um, setting goals on contracts and so forth. So certainly certification is, uh, is key in a lot of ways. And I'm always happy to point companies in the right direction when they need help along those lines. And thank you for thank the, uh, the opportunity today. Thank you, John. And uh, we'll go to Mitchell next. Sure, thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak. I did want to quickly state, uh, if we're time limited, I see, at least in my chat, a few extra questions that appear to pertain to my portion of the presentation. So uh, if it's not possible to go over them now, is there no, a No, 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 you can go over them. Go, go ahead and answer them. Okay, sure, I'll, I'll try to be brief. So I see one question regarding the EPD eligibility requirements, how is small business defined? Is the status self-declared or officially determined? So uh, the city has an established business size threshold that is adjusted annually. Uh, and that uh, limit is posted online on our website. This year, that limit as measured by gross receipts averaged over the previous three fiscal years is $40,577,886.10. Uh, and as to whether that's self-declared or officially determined, it's sort of a combination. We'll look to the uh, bid incentive affidavit uh, to see uh, whether the boxes are checked in the way that you would expect, but uh, the chief procurement officer can always request additional info to verify uh, the size of the business. Uh, so that's a good question. I see a question uh, for BEPD and veteran bid incentives that apply to construction. This is from John. Construction and non-construction. How is this incentive applied to RFPs like technology professional services where pricing is only one factor? So that answer varies depending on the incentive. Um, and I think this will go with another, I think the last question uh, that I saw. So for the veteran owned subcontractor incentive that is strictly construction, it doesn't apply to the sort of construct, you know, quote unquote construction related, uh, you know, IT or engineering or any services like that. It's very strictly uh, related to construction projects. Uh, for the eligible joint venture uh, incentive I mentioned, uh, the DPS rules do have an example, an illustrative example of how that works, but how it basically works is that instead of lowering your base bid, it provides a boost to your evaluation score. Um, however, I do want to stress that uh, since there are certain instances, especially depending on funding source, where uh, we're not allowed to put in incentives with local components, like the eligible joint venture incentive, uh, it's entirely possible that you will not see the incentive in the RFP or RFQ where you are reviewing, depending on the circumstances. So, as I stated earlier, it is very important to carefully check uh, every solicitation opportunity. There should be a checklist at the front that will have, among other things, all the incentives that apply to that specification. So, it's important to carefully check. Uh, so, that's a good question. Thank you for that. And uh, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything else. Uh, oh, and then the last question uh, I think I covered. Does the veteran-owned subcontractor incentive also apply to engineering, not just construction, such as phase one and two portions of projects? And the answer is it applies only to construction, but the um, eligible joint venture veteran-related incentive applies to non-construction projects as well as construction. Um, oh, I'm oh, sorry. I, I there's one more. Someone asked, what was the website you mentioned where the small business measurements are published? 
So I can, uh, is it possible for me to put that link in the Q&A section or should I put it in the chat? Yes, put it in the um, Q&A section. And if you have questions that weren't answered, please put them in Q&A because we can get them answered for you and then we can get back with you. But uh, everyone can see what the answers, I mean, what the questions are uh, when you do that. I just and put, did you have one more or no, something put, else? That was it. I put uh, it. I don't think it's showing up, but I think I put the link. It showed up in my Q and A. I'm hoping everyone can see that. But I put the link in that has a variety of documentation links. The one in question that I was referring to is called the gross receipts limit. Uh, but there's a good variety of information there as well. Um, and not to pile on with too much information, but uh, it's important to carefully review all the requirements for whatever you are looking into because uh, depending on the circumstances, uh, sometimes size limits for the city are defined by referring to the small business administration limits and sometimes they are defined by referring to the link I just sent. Uh, so it's important to carefully pay attention to that. But I hope this was useful. Um, thank you everyone. It was, thank you um, Mitchell and Kathy. Sure, of course. Um, so thanks to everyone for being part of this session. I want to, um, there's a couple of things. One, uh, one of the benefits of certification um, and is, as I, I believe John mentioned, or some, or Lori as well, um, is we do have a certified firm directory available on our website. Um, so if you do choose to pursue certification with the city, um, we do have a lot of entities that use that tool to be able to find you. So that's definitely something to check out. Um, you can slice and dice that database by a number of different ways in order to find firms um, to work on your projects or, you know, just to see who's out there to potentially partner with. Um, and number two, I really want to give a plug for, I mean, we've got, especially here with Mitchell um, at the end and all of our panelists, uh, there is a lot of information and we are here to, you know, to help. I want to give a plug for our uh, workshop program. Um, so Jackie runs a great workshop program all year long. Uh, we do a deep dive into certification where we can get a lot of these questions answered for you. I believe the next session is December 2nd. Um, so we, we run a number of different classes about the nitty gritty of certification as well as like how to do business with the city. Um, so it is subject matter experts from the city of Chicago as well as our partner organizations. So we certainly encourage everyone to stay in touch with us to take some of those classes throughout the year um, and be able to just engage and get your questions answered. So thank you for um, the opportunity to, to present this to you and we look forward to staying in touch. Thank you, Kathy. And for our participants, thank you for coming today. This concludes this particular session. And I say, stay safe, stay well, wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance, and hopefully next year we will be live and in person. If not, I love this uh, virtual thing. Um, so <laughs> we will make sure we'll come to you either way, uh, but we would like to see you in person. So stay safe and stay well. Thank you for joining us and thanks to all the panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.